Hey, you guys, welcome to FedBiz Exchange. I'm Michelle Brown, your coach and your mentor. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to locate and work with government contracting business service partners. You know them as subcontractors. So let's get into it. So when you're thinking of working with subcontractors because you are not directly offering the service through your business, but yet you have a clear understanding of what should happen and you would like to offer the service as a prime contractor, you are considered basically the middleman. A lot of people ask me about the concept of being a middleman, but there are different ways to think of it. I would say that a middleman can have two different strategies, but as a prime, you are going to be the person in between the subcontractor and also the government agencies. The government client is your client. The subcontractor simply does the work for you. So what I'd like to talk to you about is how to make sure that you have good, solid, healthy relationships with subcontractors, how to find them, what you should think about, and what you need to develop those types of relationships. So let's begin with the do's and don'ts to building confident relationships with business service partners, subcontractors. First of all, you need to understand that your business partners, your subcontractors can make or break you. They need to be competent, they need to be professional, they need to be people you can depend on and trust. Doesn't mean you need to know them, but as you grow in your business, if someone sounds flaky, you need to trust your judgment and cast them to the side. Finding competent subcontractors can be a challenge, but it's a must and you can't give up just because you've talked to two or three people and you can't find what you want. You need to stay focused on what you want and what you're trying to accomplish. Don't tolerate incompetence or high pricing because you need to have reasonable pricing and you need competence. Sometimes people are just overzealous with their pricing. Just because they give you a price doesn't mean that it's a good price or that it's a reasonable price or that you should accept that price. Remember, commercial pricing is always different different than government pricing. So keep that in mind. You will be the administrator of the contract. You will manage the subcontractor. So that is your job to just manage and make sure that everybody's doing what they need to do, which sometimes is not a lot at all. It's almost like the easiest passive income you could have, but you need to have good partners because they need to be competent. Remember, your reputation is on the line, so it's your past performance that counts. This is you building your multi-million dollar business with the government. So you need to make sure that anyone that is involved is trustworthy. And if you see a problem, take care of it immediately. Get clarification on the project, the service project that the government wants you to do from the solicitation or the pre solicitation. Even a source is sought. It may not be a solicitation yet, but if you see something that you think you would like to do, start working on it. Start getting your subcontractors together and then decide if you feel confident about doing the job. See yourself doing the job. If you don't feel competent or confident, either one, don't do it. Just move on to the next one and keep that particular solicitation as an example because you may need it in the future to do some research or to do some pricing. If you have no confidence, go after the job in a different way, meaning get another type of job that is similar, but it's in your industry. Maybe it's a little more lightweight. Maybe you feel like you can handle it a little bit better, but you do that by using my hit list that is down in the comment section. You can download the hit list so that you can quickly go through these contracts and see which contracts you would like to work on. You choose one based off of what I teach you in the hit list. Then also you need to clearly understand what you're asking for before contacting the contracting 
uh, the subcontracting person. Because if you don't get it, you're going to stumble all over the place. Don't ever call anybody stumbling all over the place. Write it down. Know what you need to ask for because you need to confidently get the pricing that you want. But you can't do that if you really don't know what you're asking for. You need to sound confident when talking to subcontracting uh, people because confidence is power. And that's what you need. You need people to know you know what you're doing. You don't need them to know that this is a government contract, but you need them to be hungry and want the business just like you do. So once you've decided what solicitation you want to bid on, you're going to do one of two things or both. You're going to get on Google and look for someone to provide you the service you need in the area of place of performance that's within the solicitation. So you will always know where the business is going to happen, meaning they will give you the place of performance. So if it's not in your state, then you need to look in the state for the services through a subcontractor, okay? Now, if you can't find it online or you prefer to go through referrals because you know a lot of people, then do that too. I suggest that you do both. I also suggest that you be careful about doing business through people unless that person is another business person like you because sometimes people refer people based off of friendships and that doesn't work out so well. You need to keep this strictly professional. You need to locate more than one subcontractor. Get the information on each sub before you make a verbal phone call, before you start talking to them. Research the company on the internet, look at their website. Make sure that you feel good about contacting them. If you don't have enough information because they don't have an elaborate website, that's fine. Then you can talk to them on the phone, but make sure you understand what you're asking for. Yes, you need to get pricing, but you need to talk to them about how they do business as well. They need to earn your business and you don't need to tell them about the situation or about that it's a government contract. You just need to tell them what you need from them. If they ask questions, you can give a little bit of information, but you don't need to tell them that it is a government contract. It's just a job. That's what you want. You also want competitive pricing. That's important. Now, you'll know if it's competitive because you need to get more than one price. You also need to make sure that you're checking in USA Spending to compare the pricing they're giving you. I know if it's services, it's a little bit difficult, but you need to try. You need to think outside of the box. And you definitely need to compare the pricing that you get from each subcontractor. If the subcontractor sounds iffy with little to no confidence, please move on to the next subcontractor and cross that person off the list. You do not need to work with someone that does not have confidence. This is supposed to be the expert. And remember, the government is your precious client. So you want to take care of your client. This is not something you can do yourself. You're actually putting the services in the hands of another company. So they need to be competent and they need to be sure about what they do. Require them to send you a quote via email so that you have everything in writing with terms and conditions. So if the pricing only lasts for 30 days, they need to put that in the email. Also, if they can't give you good pricing or you see that, you know, well, okay, I'm looking at this other pricing and the other pricing is so very different. You do need to go back and ask both more questions because why is their pricing so different when they're in the same areas doing the same job? You need to learn more about how they do what they do. Don't move forward if there's any sign of unprofessionalism, like they don't return phone calls, you need to move on. Or like their writing is bad in the email, you don't want to have anything to do with businesses that are not taking care of their business, period. This is your reputation and your performance, not theirs. So get the subcontractor's pricing 
and plug it, those numbers into your bid pricing template. If you don't have one of those, you can click on the link in the comment section. I'm encouraging you guys to start using this template because it helps you to figure out your numbers. You will immediately know what your profit is. You will immediately know what price you need to charge the government. So click on the link in the comment section and get your bid pricing template.